Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a beautiful day God has prepared for us once again here at Hayshire UCC. It is great to gather with you all in worship this morning, and we welcome our folks who are joining us via Zoom today. Our candles will be lit in just a moment as a reminder of Christ's presence here among us. We remember that Jesus said, where two or three or more are gathered in my name, I am there with you. And so today we come together here in our beautiful sanctuary in person and through video and phone from all corners of our area into one body in Christ. And whenever we do come together, we hope as the family and friends of Hayshire, we hope that this is a time and a place to rest and to encounter God within our midst. So a couple of announcements I have, and then I know that Meredith and maybe Delilah are going to help me out with another one. But I wanted to remind you all, on August 11th, we're going to have a worship service that will give you a little bit of the flavor of um, the trip that I took in May out to Arizona and talk a little bit about my experience there. But really, it's the lunch afterwards that will bring out some of those flavors and talk about the experience that Pastor Kathy and I had along the border and what information we learned versus what you all have heard and know and believe that we know based on what media tells us in our own research. So we hope that you will come out and join us not only for worship, but stay for lunch and conversation. If you are planning to attend, please sign up on the bulletin board so we have a general idea of headcount. And we are hoping that our friends for Emmanuel will be joining us for lunch and conversation as well. So we look forward to that. Uh, be sure you check the back of your bulletins for other announcements. Uh, girls, what's happening with our school supplies? So thank you everybody for um, donating to the school supplies already. We have a lot. It's over there at, behind the black table. But we have one week left, so make sure to um, donate, donate more. Mm -hmm. What do you got, Meredith? Uh, no, you say it. Ooh. Come oh. on. You can do it. <laughs> um, the school supplies that um, well, we need any school supplies, like scissors, pencils, Crayons, anything that comes to mind when you think of school supplies. Yeah. Single yeah. subject notebooks. Yeah, no notebooks. Okay. And it's all going to the well. Special yeah. erasers, those fun stuff too, right? Not yeah. just the ordinary oh, yeah. stuff. Yeah, fun stuff. stuff. Okay, will that work? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you, girls. Okay, so school supplies, we've already got a lot, which is amazing. Uh, we filled the box to overflowing last week. This week it's full again, and now there is a secondary box next to it. So we are just rolling in school supplies, and we will be able to help our friends and neighbors that don't have what we have through the well. So thank you for all of that. Looks like Mr. Glenn has an announcement. This is just a public announcement. I belong to an organization called OLE, which is o Osher Lifelong Learning Institute out of Penn State. And it's an organization, of a group of people actually, who have come together as members and actually uh, offer classes to people, mostly people who are retired, people 50 years or older. Uh, they offer classes from retired uh, professors, teachers, people who are specialists in their, in their field and so on. And I've been in this organization now for, I guess, two years, and it's unbelievable how fantastic they, these people are, the, the things that they offer. Um, they have fall courses coming up. They have travel opportunities, special events, special interest groups. So if you're interested in possibly joining this group, it is a membership fee of $65 a year. Uh, and the courses that they offer are like $8 a course. And it's just amazing the things that you will learn. Uh, one of the real specialists in, who's a 
person who has, uh, does history, he used to, used to work for the York Daily Record, but he reports on a lot of things in New York County. And with the, uh, York County is going to be celebrating the 275th anniversary, and he actually has a book coming out. Oh, so wow. I'm sure we're going to hear more about that. So these are kind of things that are being offered by this group, OLI, O-L-L-I, and I have information out, um, out in the north, the uh, gathering area, and there's a registration date for, of, actually there's an open house on Monday, this coming Monday, from 10 to 12. So we're inviting people to come to the open house. You do have to register, however, and the information is on the, on the sheet as to how to register. and. Uh, Possibly join the group if you have interest. Great. Thank you. So any questions you have, Siglet. All right. Thank you very much for that. Are there other announcements, joys, or concerns? Ooh, ooh, Miss Laney. You can slide that in. Thank you. I am short, but not that short. <laughs> <laughs> um, another public announcement. At Zion Lutheran Church today from 1.30 to 5.30, we're having a community band festival. Never been done before, but we're, there are four local community bands, um, Emmicksville, Broodbex, and there's one from Red Lion, there's another one. They're all getting together, and they're all each playing a set, and then at the end, they're all going to get together and play more music together. With, and I'm thinking there's going to be at least 100, maybe 125 band members all doing this. We're having food trucks. We are having... Um, some craft vendors show up and sell things. So if you're free, bring your lawn chair, bring your umbrellas, because there's no shade, it's gonna be hot. Um, so bring that, have a good time, if you're looking for something new to do today. And what time? Two to five. Two to five. 1.30 to 5.30, two to five, some, within that. Okay, so two to five, basically. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. So for those of you that don't remember, we share Laney with Zion Lutheran Church, so she gets time to broadcast what they're doing and share things from them as well. And she does that over there for us too. So benefits of having a shared musician and they are really lucky to have her. And you know, I don't know about you all, but I really don't like having to share her, but for it's another church group, we're happy to, to spread the joy of Lainey's music. Other announcements, joys or concerns? Miss Sally. Oh, wow. Sounds like we need a picture of our grapevine. Well, if the birds don't eat all of it, Dick, you can help us set up a grape stomping time. And we can uh, see about at least having grape juice, if not wine. <laughs> that's right, that's right. A sip, a sip from the thimble, that's right. Other announcements, joys or concerns? Friends, as we enter into our time together, remember that no matter who you are, where you have come from in the last week, or where you're headed in the week to come, for the next 50, 60 minutes or so, you are home. Let us prepare our hearts and souls for worship together this morning.
So Dick just asked the question how Jackie Bailey, our uh, preschool director, is doing. Um, she is doing fairly well. Her shoulder is starting to show some healing, so some positive progress. Um, they have decided to wait. It'll be another week yet, so it was two weeks from her last appointment before they confirm whether they will do surgery or whether it is healing the way the doctor would like to see it. So she is doing as well as can be expected right now. Um, still gets bouts of pain and some of that, but she actually was in on Wednesday for the morning to sit with our kids as they were here for summer fun. Um, so thank you for asking. I know she would appreciate it. So thank you very much. Good morning. Uh, will all those who are able please rise and join me in the call to worship? Come rest your spirits in the Lord. We come hungering and thirsting for God's word. This is the place of peace and hope where all may be fed and healed. Bring us to the time of healing. Come place your trust in God who is always near you. We come to worship. Let us confess our God. 
For the Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all of his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Let us pray. You know how we are, Lord. We say that we will take time to refresh our spirits and our souls, and then we quickly turn our lives with activities to the point of exhaustion. We turn to you for feeding and nurture, asking you to give us something to sustain us through our times. We are even willing to tell you what we have, but what we look closely, we discover that we bring so little to you. Take what we have, our gifts and our needs, heal and forgive, we disobey your word. Remind us that you have given to us all that we need to serve you in this world. The world abounds with your miracles of love and hope. Open our eyes to see them and our hearts to know that these are from you and not of our own making. Heal and restore us to your everlasting love. Amen. Cease your fear, fearful fretting. God's love is lavished upon you. It is always there for you, offering healing and hope. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Would our kids come up, please? Okay, I need you to put your thinking caps on today. We have a little bit of math to do, all right? So, what is this? It's a clock. It's a clock. How many seconds are there in one minute? 60. How many minutes are there in one hour? 60. 60. Oh, you're smart. Took me a long time to learn that. So, today, I have one hour to spend with both of you. I promise to spend time with you individually, separate from the rest. How much of my time will each of you get? 30 minutes. Boy, you are really fast. What if one of you needs more than 30 minutes, though? What if Meredith needs 40 minutes? Does that make a difference? It kind of does. Why does it kind of make a difference? She gets 10 minutes more, you get 10 minutes less. How does that make you feel? That she gets more time than you? Um, upset. Upset? Why? Because I get less time than you. Okay. So that's a bad thing. You still get time. I mean, I guess I still get time, but I can always have time. I, I can always have more time. More time. Yeah. So what if I told you that I had more than one hour to spend? That even if she needed 40 minutes, she would still get at least 30 minutes of my time. Would that be good? Yeah. What if I told you that all of these people also have to be figured into how much time each and everybody gets? Hmm. Meredith's going to have to schedule another time. going to have to schedule another time, yeah. But everybody that's here, sometimes all they need is and want is a simple hello from me. How are you doing? And that takes a couple minutes of my time. Other times they need time to talk about some things, and that could take a lot more, couldn't it? So in today's story, we hear about Jesus doing something really special. Do you remember this story about Jesus feeding a huge crowd of people? Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember what he uses to feed that big crowd of people? Bread and fish. Bread and fish. Was it a lot of bread and fish when it started? Like 
close. It was five loaves and two fish that he started with. And you know what? The, the, where he got those two, five loaves and two fish was from a young boy. Yeah. So it's a kid that leads all of us to think about how we can unselfishly give. Isn't that kind of cool? Yeah. You two and all the other kids here are always leading us in learning how we can grow more and closer to Jesus. Bet you didn't know that, did you? Every week I, I say in my prayer, thank you for helping us learn and grow together, right? Yeah. So you all are teaching us and leading us along the way. And so that's kind of why we get time together before I get time with the adults. So that you start the learning process for them. Make them think about things a little bit more. So that when I'm ready to talk to them, they're ready to listen a little bit more. So Jesus is like, you know, it's my microphone. I'm trying to make it behave, and it doesn't want to. It's cracking today. So Jesus is like me giving you all the time that you need. Does Jesus have a limit on how much time he can give you? Does Jesus have a limit? No. You don't sound sure about that. No. He doesn't have a limit. Why do you, why do you think he might? Okay. Delilah says that she's 80% sure that Jesus doesn't have a limit, but she's 20% unsure because you just never know what's going to happen out there. But Jesus doesn't have a limit. He's there for everything that we need. Even if the two of you need him at the exact same time, he still gives you all the time that you need. Isn't that kind of interesting? So that's kind of where our story goes today is, is that Jesus is more than enough for all of us. And what he does is he can divinely multiply not just time, but himself and bread and fish. All right, let's do a quick prayer. God, thank you for your divine concept of time and the fact that your time is different from our clocks here on earth and that you have more than enough to give to all of us, even if it is at the exact same moment, and we can feel like you're talking just to us. I thank you for these beautiful young minds that help us learn and grow each week, that help us think about things in new ways. I ask your blessing upon them, their parents, and each of us as we continue to learn and grow together. Amen. Thank you, girls. Appreciate that.
Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Holy God, may your word give us power to comprehend with all the saints the length and width and height and depth of the love of Christ and fulfill our life in you. Amen. The gospel reading today is from uh, the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the uh, other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing with the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the uh, festival of Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? Uh, Philip answered, excuse me, he said, uh, Jesus said this to, uh, to test uh, him, for he himself knew what he was uh, going to do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a boy here with five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among all these people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves uh, that they had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were to, uh, coming to take him by force to make him the king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because of a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. And this ends the reading. Along with our gospel text this morning, um, we also have an epistle letter from Ephesians. So it's actually part of a prayer that Paul is saying on behalf of the people of Ephesus. So let us eavesdrop. One girl said, oh. According to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all of the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. So I ask you a question this morning. Are you people who have a stash of extras in your house or are you more likely to have just what you need? How many people are my ones that have the stash of extras? Okay. How many are my people that have just what you need? Oh, okay, we have a few.
few of those folks. Good to know, good to know. Next question, did COVID change how much you keep in your extras stash? How are my yes folks for that? COVID affected your stash. It depends on what I stashed. Well, of course, but it affected it. Yes. Toilet paper. Toilet paper, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Toilet paper became the largest commodity during COVID, and I think we all had a little bit of a stash for that, even us that are more just what I need kind of folks. So how do you know that you have enough? enough savings for retirement, enough food, enough miscellaneous supplies, you know, for just in case, or enough time. How do you know when you have enough? You stop worrying about it. You stop worrying about it. Okay. You don't know, really. But you know enough, or you think you got enough that you stop worrying about it. Okay. Well, Reverend James Lawrence, a former economist, shares that economists are taught to look at the world through the lens of scarcity. In fact, the definition of economics he learned in school is the study of the allocation of scarce, limited resources among competing ends. Economics is based on the view of the world that there is not enough there is never enough. Sadly, this is the common way to look at our world. In fact, Lawrence believes that this is how the disciples are actually looking at the world in today's gospel reading. Lawrence comment, his comments make sense for today's story and for life in general. In our, in our story, the disciples see this very large crowd. We're told 5,000 plus minus people. I mean, that's huge, right? So that's what we hear. The disciples don't have much money between them. I'm sorry for the ringing, folks. They don't have much money between them, much less know where they could go and purchase the amount of bread and fish that they would need to feed everyone. The estimate is, is it would take about one month's wages or more, maybe even a lot more, one month's wages for the, all of the disciples to supply the, and feed the hungry crowd. So rightly so, the disciples are focused on what they don't have at that moment. Do we ever do that? Spend too much energy focusing on what we don't have? Well, you can't blame the disciples. They are rightfully anxious because they can look out over the rolling hills and see the large crowd of folks packed in shoulder to shoulder along the shore towards the foothills. And all of them are looking for Jesus to take care of them. So can you imagine 5,000 plus or minus hangry people and they're all looking at you for their next meal. How many people want that job? What, nobody's with me? Come on, be a little brave. It is definitely not a group that I want to be part of or close to. So Lawrence states that the, the disciples have forgotten what they do have though. And what they do have is Jesus. I mean, haven't they been following Jesus around and watching him perform all of those miracles for how long now? They've seen some amazing displays of power, and yet they still doubt that Jesus could feed that crowd, that huge crowd, if he chose to. Why? Why do they doubt him? Maybe it's because when they look at the world through the lens of scarcity, that there is never enough of anything. So they don't think Jesus can pull this rabbit out of his hat. In Ephesians, we hear Paul's prayer for his friends, asking God in Christ to accomplish more than we can ever ask for or imagine. Reverend Dr. Bruce Epperly reminds us that God is moving in our lives to accomplish more than we can ever ask or imagine. 
you know, we are the problem, or our conditioned thought process is the problem. We're thinking too small, and we're expecting too little from God, Epperly says. We need to learn to expect great things from God and great things from ourselves. So Paul's words challenge us to ponder what it means to live into the fullness of God. That is a huge challenge indeed. It requires our complete trust in something that we have no control over. Or do we? In our gospel story, Andrew, tell, Andrew tells Jesus that there is this young boy who has offered up his five loaves of bread and two fish to help feed that, the people. A child shall lead us with unselfish acts to help meet the needs of others around him. In our story, we're told that Jesus had already decided he was feeding everyone. Even before the boy made his offer, he already knew that God would provide what was needed. So when the boy made his offer, Jesus gratefully took those five loaves and two fish. He thanked the boy and then told his disciples, this is all that we're going to need. I imagine that they were shocked and that they tried to voice protest, but Jesus just smiled and told them to get everyone seated in small groups. While they were doing that, Jesus lifts up the bread and the fish, offers it to God, and gives thanks for what has been given. And he blesses it. Then he proceeds to break up that bread, just like we do for communion every month. He breaks it up, and the fish gets chopped into pieces, filling basket after basket after basket with pieces of bread and fish. And then he tells the disciples to pass them around to everyone. Other people start to pitch in and help hand out the food. And before they all know it, everyone is quietly eating. You know how it gets quiet when everybody's stuffing their mouth at first? That's what happened. Can you imagine 5,000 people, how noisy it was? And all of a sudden, it's quiet without the ringing. Everyone ate, and they ate until they were full. Oh, I can't eat anymore. And Jesus says, okay, now make sure you put all of those leftover pieces back in the baskets and bring them back up here. Before their very eyes, the disciples have witnessed, as well as the people, the blessing of divine multiplication, which brings abundance from what we perceive as scarcity, Everly shares. So today it seems like we find ourselves, just like the disciples in the crowd that day, waiting to see what Jesus can do, will do, to meet our needs. So I wonder, are we stuck in the common thought mode of scarcity? Are we stuck in thinking there's not enough? Do we struggle with that feeling that there is never enough funds, time, help, food, other resources to meet our needs and the needs of others around us? What do you think? Are we? Why? Why do we not believe that having Jesus is enough? that he will help fill the gaps so that all things work out for us. I'm not saying that everything's going to go your way, people. But they, they will work out. Do we see Jesus as a scarce resource, a limited resource? One that is limited and can only do so much? Delilah had said 80% she believes Jesus is there all the time and can do anything, but there's that 20%. Yeah, not quite so sure. So do we think Jesus is only an 80% kind of guy? Do we have only an 80% kind of faith? 
And if we do, do we try to use that resource carefully? You know, stashing some of it away so that Jesus can and will provide when we need it most? Do we only call on Him when we need Him most? Lucky for us, Lawrence states, Jesus is not a scarce resource. Thank you. With Jesus, there is always enough. Big exclamation point. Always, always enough. And more to share. We don't have to limit what we call on Jesus for because he is always available to meet us in our need and provide us with support, care, healing, hope, and love. What would happen to us as individuals or as a congregation or our wider community if we anticipated God's blessing upon us? If we knew it was going to happen, how would that change how we think about and see ourselves? What could, what would happen if we believed our generosity would be multiplied to help others? If our gifts and bounty dedicated to God's vision could and would bring results beyond our wildest dreams, beyond our expectations. This miracle, Epperly writes, is not contrary to normal casual relationships in life, but reflective of God's deeper causality moving within ordinary life. Perhaps our world is filled with more wonder and energy than we can imagine. The pouring, the power flowing from Jesus flows through us when we open ourselves to God by faith. Even as small and as equal to that of a mustard seed, Epperly states. So on that day in our story, along that sun-dappled shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus taught his friends and us that economics is not about scarcity, but it is about abundance and sharing the wealth we all have. When we understand the radical economics of Jesus, we know that we will always have enough. There is always more than enough to share with others, and we are expected to openly share no matter how little or small we seem to have, because the love of Christ is not a limited, scarce resource. It is one that will divinely multiply the more we share it with others. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. So this morning, we bow our hearts and minds in prayer before God as we lift up those things and people who are on our hearts. When I end each petition with, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. So let us pray together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you open your hand and feed us in due season. Satisfy the desires of every living thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the family of nations, the families in our communities, and our own families, that they may have all they need to live in peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of the churches and houses of worship that we may find ways of cooperating to care for the earth and care for those in need while giving you the glory in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are near to all who call on you. Use us as you use the boy with two fish and five barley loaves to answer the cries of the hungry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the victims of war and violence, 
for the orphans, the mothers, and the men who must live on the streets, and for all of those who are seen as the fragments of society. May they be gathered up so that no one is lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and those facing the end of their days. May Christ dwell in their hearts through faith, and may they know that they are rooted and grounded in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we would make you a king, forgive us. When we are caught up in the storms of life, come to us, calm our fears, and help us to reach our destinations. Now, through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the love of Christ, we pray together, giving thanks and praise to you. So we join our voices saying, Our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Because a little boy shared his bread and fish, a multitude ate. Let us freely share what we have been given. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. We rejoice with thanksgiving for all we have received. Multiply these gifts that we give so that the world may be more deeply know the fullness of life in you. Amen.
Well, friends, our hour is quickly coming to an end. Let us share in our blessing this week. Go now rooted and grounded in love. We go to make known to all people the mighty deeds and love of God. Friends, we have been upheld and raised up by our God. May God continue to strengthen your inner beings and carry us out into the splendor of God's kingdom. Amen. Please be seated. Every week, we are reminded and we pause for that last moment to think about the fact that every time Jesus comes into the presence, but especially every time he leaves those nearest and dearest, he gives us the amazing gift, the transformative gift of God's peace. May the peace of Christ be with each of you. Go in peace. Have a blessed week. Go see the band fest today if you need something fun to do. And we will see you next Sunday. Take care, everybody.